Hi, welcome to Daily Dose of Anime Recaps. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the first four episodes of the series Shine On Bakumatsu Bad Boys. A group of prisoners on death row are unexpectedly made the new outlaws of the city so that they can take down other criminals. Will the plan work? Or will the death row prisoners run riot? Before we begin, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss the next episodes. In the opening scene, our protagonist, Ichiban Boshi, arrives in a town and rips his wanted poster. After a while, he finds a group of three samurai attacking an old man and a young girl. He stops them and shows them a mask, asking if they had seen samurai wearing such masks. Surprisingly, the men are the ones he's looking for. Ichiban Boshi is happy to have finally found them and introduces himself as the samurai killer. He then starts fighting them but is quickly arrested by thief takers, disguising themselves as police. He is then prepared for execution, but to his surprise, he's taken elsewhere. In the next scene, we see Ichiban Boshi lined up with the other criminals, who are also expected to be killed, and wonder where they are. The criminals are Sakuya, a hitman, Bo, a big guy who loves to eat food, Gietaro, who enjoys the finest things in life like liquor and gambling, Sogen, a doctor who loves to dissect corpses, Satsuran, a monk who practices a religion for the dead, and Akira, who is the only girl from the group. The man standing in front of them introduces himself as Haisuke Toto the eight-unit captain of the Shinsengumi. Hasuke explains that on the 18th of August, the government changed. Seven of the leading keepers of the peace in Kyoto, known as the Shinsengumi, were killed by a mysterious assailant, leaving a severely injured Hasuke as the only survivor. Now, desperate to maintain control of the city, the sole surviving commander has turned to seven criminals, including Ichiban Boshi, to replace his dead commanders. The criminals are then given a choice. Either they will be executed or be become the new substitute leaders of the Shinsengumi. They immediately accept the offer, as they do not want to die. Haisuke then gives them their identities, Sakuya as Hichikara Toshitsu, for it fits his job description as a hitman, Bo as Horada Sanosuke, for all the food they can serve, Giataro as Nagakura Shinpachi, for still having much to enjoy, liquor, women, and gambling, Sogen as Sanan Kesuke, for he can have access to dissect corpses while treating injured as a doctor, Satsuran as Saito Hajimi for being able to practice his religion for the dead, Akira as Okita Soji for the Shinsengumi is a total meritocracy where her gender is accepted while cross-dressing to test herself against men. This leaves only Ichibanboshi who strongly refuses to become a samurai after one wearing a faceless mask killed his family. To his surprise, Hesuke shows him a mask and confirms it as the same one the samurai who assassinated the commanders was wearing. Hesuke reveals that the samurai is the same culprit behind the killing of the Shinsengumi leaders, who belong to an organization known as the Masked Demons. Having reached an agreement with somebody with a common interest, Ichiban Boshi agrees to join the Shinsengumi as Kondo Isami. After assigning the criminals' identities, Hesuke reports to the military commissioner of Kyoto Katamore Matsudaira that the substitutes joined the Shinsengumi. Katamore notes that with the increased criminal activity in the capital, they can't afford to disband the Shinsengumi right now. With this, Akira decides to start training the men. Katamore tells Hesuke that he doesn't expect much from the criminals, but they just need to maintain enough influence to scare the forces attempting to overthrow the dictatorship. Hesuke swears that the Shinsengumi will be restored and will protect public order in Kyoto. Next, Akira asks the new members if they know their swordsmanship, but except Sakuya, the rest prefer guns, raw power, bombs, or even peace. However, as swordsmanship is needed, Akira decides to start with Kondo. Given his new identity, Ichiban Boshi takes a few moments to realize she is addressing him. In the following scene, Akira and Ichiban Boshi face each other for a match, but the latter throws his wooden sword, stating he doesn't need it, and attacks her with kicks. Meanwhile, Katamori reveals that he looked into the mask and it seems it's used in no plays, but will continue to investigate more. He then tells Hasuke about a Ronin, a type of nomadic samurai, wandering around the places, Shimibara and Gion. Hesuke replies that he'll take care of him. Hesuke returns to see Akira and Ichiban Boshi fighting, but stops them. He hits Ichiban Boshi and gives him his wooden sword, stating that the sword is the samurai's soul, and he can't just throw it on the ground. Hesuke tells him that they won't be fighting opponents who can be defeated with kicks, and Ichiban Boshi agrees to learn swordsmanship. Later, the substitutes begin operating as members of the Shin 
Vince and Gumi, as Heisuke gives them their first job. He explains that they will be patrolling the city and taking care of some business. He then decides that they will split up into three groups, focused on those with combat experience. Heisuke, Giataro, and Bo will head to Gion. Akira, Sutsuran, and Sogen will go to Karasuma. Ichibanboshi and Sakuya are the only two left, but they immediately disagree to go with each other. Heisuke tells Sakuya that he's strong, and that even if a puppy is running around his legs, he should be fine. Ichibanboshi doesn't like to be called a puppy, but gets punched by Heisuke to shut up. Heisuke also tells the rest to avoid combat, as they aren't skilled enough. Elsewhere, in a market, a blonde man decides to give a new sword to a ronin. While patrolling with Heisuke and Giataro, Bo smells tempura and rushes to eat it. Heisuke punches him, scolding him that a samurai should not do this. He then apologizes and pays for the food. Giataro laughs at Bo, but Heisuke tells him that they are being paid and he doesn't need to do that. Giataro acts like he doesn't know anything, but Heisuke insists that he put it back. Giataro then takes out a wallet and drops it to a man, telling him that he dropped it. Soon after, they hear a woman scream and head out to check it. Akira's group also joins them, and they see a man with a wound. Sogen tells them that he will treat the wound, and Sutsuran states he will pray for him if he dies. Heisuke decides to leave them there and go look for the ronin. In the meantime, Ichibanboshi tells Sakuya that he will surpass him in swordsmanship, but Sakuya tells him he is already number one in stupidity. They hear a man asking for help and see the ronin holding a weird sword that has a light blue flame. Ichibanboshi rushes and kicks him from behind allowing the other man to escape. The ronin slashes from a distance, sending a ranged attack, and Sakuya pulls Ichibanboshi down to avoid the attack. He then engages the man, but after a short fight, the ronin runs away. Sakuya tells Ichibanboshi that he needs to draw his sword and see the skills of his opponent, instead of rushing. However, Ichibanboshi states that by that time, the other man would have died. While Sakuya wears the sword for killing people, Ichibanboshi carries it to protect people. Ichibanboshi then starts running after the ronin. Next, Sakuya reunites with Heisuke and the rest, and tells him they ran into a ronin with a weird sword and one of those masks. Additionally, Ichibanboshi ignored orders and went after the ronin. That annoys Heisuke, and they start looking for Ichibanboshi. Meanwhile, Ichibanboshi catches up to the ronin, who is about to kill a family with a kid. Not wanting the kid to have the same fate as him, Ichibanboshi yells at the ronin to stop and draws his sword, which was previously given by Heisuke. The sword belongs to the late commander Kon. Isami. The sword shines red and he engages the ronin, breaking his purple shining sword. The family asks him who he is, and Ichibanboshi introduces himself as the commander of the Shinsengumi, Kondo Asami. The following day, the substitutes attend a naming ceremony, facilitated by Shukimikado Haru, head of the Shukimikado family. We then see a brief flashback to Sakuya's childhood. It's revealed that Sakuya's father would assault his mother. A while later, Hasuke briefs to the substitutes that their next job is to escort Sakuma Shozan, a notable intellectual, on his journey to a nearby naval academy. While on their way, Sakuma thinks he recognizes Sakuya from somewhere, but Sakuya just tells him that he's the vice commander of the Shinsengumi, Hijikata Toshitsu. Deep in the woods, the group comes across a bunch of traitors who do not want Sakuma to be transported to the academy. They waste no time in attacking the Shinsengumi. Soon after, a fight between the two groups ensues, as Sakuya and Akira swiftly defeat their opponent. Meanwhile, Ichibanboshi's sword doesn't glow red as it did earlier, while Sutsuran gets his sword stuck in a tree. Thankfully, Sogen saves them by unleashing gunpowder. After the fight is over, the group takes care of the corpses of the traitors. To avoid being mistaken as murderers, Sakuma has his escorts put a notice board above the corpses. The board reads that the dead bodies are of criminals who tried to attack the great Sakuma. The group then resumes their journey. Along the way, Sakuma finally remembers Sakuya. He was the hitman high to kill him. As the new commander of the Shinsengumi, Ichibanboshi attempts to maintain peace between the two by pleading with Sakuya to let go of the past. He adds that every member of the group has their own past they want to forget and start a new journey, being part of the Shinsengumi. Hearing this, Sakuma tells him that he was never going to punish Sakuya in the first place. He too understands that the substitutes now have a new purpose in life. As the group arrives at their destination, American Navy steamships are seen drilling with their cannon. They discuss how Japan should deal with foreign powers, implying the border has not yet been fully opened. The presence of the cannons also prompts them to discuss the fate of swordsmanship in the growing gunpowder era. Akira, for one, has been using a blade all her life, and after seeing the cannons, she wonders if her swordsmanship skills are validated. Meanwhile, Sakuya too worships his sword, 
so he wouldn't change his weapon whatsoever. Sakuma then asks Ichibanboshi if he's willing to give up Kondo's sword. The latter replies that he won't be trading it with any other weapon. In fact, he'll avenge his family with it. After that, he wants to change the world by replacing people who make absurd rules. The old man Sakuma laughs at his statement, wondering if he's a nuisance or a revolutionary. He then tells Ichibanboshi that he should meet a man named Sakamoto Ryoma, as their interests are the same. Later that evening, the group rests in a cottage for the night. Sakuya wakes up in the middle of the night, still haunted by his childhood memories. In a flashback, we learn that Sakuya finally snapped and killed his father for assaulting his mother. He then gets his sword and goes outside. Ichibanboshi too wakes up and sees Sakuya's bed empty. He decides to follow his colleague. In a steep area near the sea, Sakuya is approached by his former partner, Kawakami Gensai, who asks if Sakuya was able to kill the old man, Sakuma Shotsan. Sakuya replies that he is no longer working for their master, as he is now part of the Shinsengumi, and thus wants to protect the old man. Learning this, Gensei decides to attack Sakuya with his flaming sword, but Ichibanboshi interrupts their duel. He also overhears the two and learns that Sakuya's first kill was his father. After Ichibanboshi she interrupts, Sakuya manages to go into glowing sword mode and finish off his former partner. The following day, the substitutes continue to hone their sword skills. Karamori visits the place and informs Heisuke that a samurai group called Chosu has been snooping around the area. Their head, Katsura Kogoru, is plotting some games against the Shinsengumi, so they need to look into the matter. Heisuke diligently accepts to get the new members of the Shinsengumi into work. Having discovered that Sakuya's first kill was his father, Ichibanboshi trusts his enigmatic teammate less than ever. He doesn't want to pair with Sakuya. Heisuke explains to the substitutes that a dangerous rebel has been sighted in the red light district, and it's up to them to smoke him out. While the bulk of the Shinsengumi is deployed to standard patrols throughout the district, Ichibanboshi and Akira are assigned to go undercover at one of the local establishments. Disguised as a laborer and geisha, respectively, the two have to hunt down any signs that their target is in the area. As Akira Kira is wearing her new dress to disguise herself, we see a glimpse of her past. The anime goes into a flashback, where a young Akira is surrounded by a group of thugs. The leader rapes her, but she collects enough courage to slay all of her harassers. Terrified, she holds a knife, covered in blood, and looks ominously at the corpses. Back in the present, Akira and Ichibanboshi head outside for their job. Elsewhere in a market, the rest of the team split into duos as they search the city in different locations. Akira stumbles upon a geisha house called called Yoshidaya, and gets caught for eavesdropping. Surprisingly, the man who catches her happens to be Katsura Kagoro, the man they are after. Akira is saved by the owner of Yoshidaya, the head geisha, who lies to Katsura that Akira is one of her girls. Meanwhile, Sakuya catches a secret agent who's been following him and Hisuke for a while. The agent works for Chosu Domain, another samurai group. The agent is responsible for spreading the rumor that Katsura is a constant visitor of Yoshidaya. After learning this, Heisuke and Sakuya head toward the geisha house. Back in Yoshidaya, Katsura and his men suspect that there is a spy among the geisha. Katsura then orders his men to kill everyone until they confess. Akira wastes no time in revealing herself and insists Katsura leave other women alone. However, he doesn't listen and a fight soon ensues. Thankfully, Giataro and Bo arrive just at the right time to save the day. Other members of the Shinsengumi also join the fight after learning about it in the market. In the next scene, Akira and the head geisha fend themselves from Katsura. The head geisha decides to leave the house, before revealing that she is actually a man, disguised in geisha clothing. Akira then slashes the supposed Katsura, and later realizes that the head geisha is actually the real Katsura who just ran away. After the fight, Bo and Giataro decide to enjoy themselves in the geisha house, while others rest in the building next door. The duo falls asleep after drinking and eating excessively. A group of assassins from the Choshu domain take this as an opportunity and ambush them with their magic swords. Thankfully, Sakuya learns of the situation and hurries his team members to the site. Bo and Giataro are saved, while one assassin is captured and interrogated. This leads to discovering that the magic swords are being distributed to troublemakers through intermediaries, which turn out to be a group of orphans that Giataro 
knows well. He makes contact with them and ends up arranging a double cross to catch the sword supplier. In the meantime, Akira meets up with the geisha Choshu Lord again, finding out that the extremists from his domain are part of the problem, as they work for the masked demons. The extremists were the ones who attempted the assassination of Bo and Giataro. Katsura himself is interested in stopping his men from doing something as stupid as working with the masked demons. Next, Ichiban Boshi and the team find out about the masked demons' hideout with the help of one of the orphans. They use the orphan as bait and storm the place before holding the assassins hostage. However, the boss of the masked demons arrives. Ichiban Boshi initially takes him to be the man who slaughtered his family, so he goes after him. But when he manages to knock his foe's mask off, he realizes he's fighting his own brother, who was thought to be long dead. He introduces himself as Rashomaru, the current boss of the masked demons. 